Good morning, everybody. Lots of changes to go through today, uh, most of it UI. So let's jump into this. So, uh, a lot of things here to show off. Uh, hopefully I can remember most of it, but uh, I'll try to go down a list that I have that I've been keeping. Um, some of you might notice that this uh, screen has been kind of tweaked a little bit, just a little more user-friendly looking. Um, battery indicator is back on the DualShocks. Um, I finished the code that was uh, keeping that from showing up, so that's working. Um, announcements now has a little unread indicator. Uh, just to let you know if there's anything that's been going on uh, input mapper wise uh, to check this guy out and it'll go away um, after you've read anything that's unread um, like it just went away there um, alright now to the actual big stuff profiles are getting a major UI overhaul um, first of all you're gonna notice that the list that was taking up the main window space here is now actually part of the tab header here it'll list the profiles over here uh, so you can open up one of them here and the next major thing you're gonna see is the mapping UI um, along with all the other settings uh, have been getting some UI tweaks uh, settings have descriptions underneath them uh, they're just spaced a little bit better. They're not full width when they no, don't need to be. Um, just visual appealing stuff. Um, stuff, you know, mostly like polishing. Um, going in here to the actual mapping, uh, you see when we mouse over these drop down boxes, it'll highlight the various as aspects uh, that these drop downs correspond to. Um, and this graphic uh, corresponds with the input and output you select up here uh, so actually DualShock 4 is the only one I've worked on this graphic for so far I plan to do one for a 360 controller as well um, but for now when it, whenever there isn't a graphic it goes back to the generic list so style that you see here uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch this back just so we can so show this off a little bit more uh, so, like I said, we have all these that are in their various spots that correspond with the image, should make it a little quicker. And another thing that makes it quicker is instead of having every channel that the application supports, it only lists the channels that are relevant to your output device. So if I were to go into here, change the output device to DualShock 4, you see not only do all of these actually dynamically change to the DualShock 4 names, but this drop down box also only shows the DualShock 4 channels. So, that should make mapping a lot. <coughs> Excuse me. I could edit that out, but I'm too lazy. Uh, but, anyways, that should make mapping a lot easier for people. Um, this should lower the entry bar for people that are. A little hesitant to this program because it's too complicated. Um, this visual style has always seemed to appeal to people, so uh, that's the way we're going to go with it from now on. Um, as well as, I'm going to work on these icons. Uh, right now, these are just fallback icons that correspond to the type of input. Uh, you see, if it's a button of some sort, it has this icon. If it's a uh, variable input, like a stick or a trigger, it'll have this gauge. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it like the old application where you could actually have the the A, B, X, Y, um, Xbox looking buttons as the icons. Um, I'm going to find a way to incorporate it so I can override these defaults with custom images if I want to in the metadata. Uh, so we've got that. Uh, there's also a few less settings visible here. Uh, you'll see I used to have a bunch of state, state modifiers and uh, that might be confusing to some people. So by default now there's only one input state modifier. But if you go over here to your general settings, there is a new setting that says show advanced settings. Checking that, 
Apparently breaks a few things. Huh. Interesting. I'll figure that out later. Nope, nope, now they're back. I have no idea what causes that, but I'll take a look at that. Um, but anyways, checking that, showing advanced settings. Now if we go into profiles, now we see all the state modifiers listed. Uh, so that's just a way for me to simplify things for the more entry level users, but still have an option there for the more advanced people to be able to get into the details and change things around. Um, other than that, that's about it. Uh, the what is it? The avatar, the user avatar, wasn't working before, but that's working now with user accounts. Even though user accounts don't really do much right now, since advertising is completely gone in the application and cloud functionality isn't a fully developed thing yet. Um, so uh, I think I've pretty much showed off the changes. Um, I'm sure I'm missing stuff because I've been. Oh yeah, these are of course a lot prettier looking. It used to just show the name of the drivers. Now you get an actual icon and the and the uh, user friendly name. Um, in the devices, if you go over here and you create a new profile, you're actually it's automatically going to fill in the input device based on where you selected it from. Um, you're still going to have to choose an output driver because that's uh, you, the, there's no way for it to automatically know what you want it to be uh, but once you do that of course then you get your full UI here uh, so uh, just a, uh, a couple uh, fun little changes there uh, UI, UI friendly stuff mostly so um, that's about it I will keep you guys apprised there's obviously a lot more changes in the works um, I've been spending a lot of time uh, doing updates on this, so uh, I expect to see things changing a lot more rapidly in the next few weeks. So that's about it, guys. Have a good one.